all right guys thank you so much for tuning into the video here really good news the utah utes have defeated uh the washington state cougars couldn't be happier uh final score 24 to 13 big time win for the utes really a must win and uh it, it was definitely came down to the wire don't let that final score fool you the utes were not in the driver's seat until the very end of this game that score really wasn't as close or as far apart as what we're talking about. The game was actually 13 to 10 Washington State until about the final four minutes. TJ Pledger breaks off a huge run um, that that gives us a shot to score or that that gets us a touchdown for like 25, 27 yards, and then our defense comes out makes a huge turnover by Phillips number eight for a, a interception for a touchdown. You know, just incredible play. Uh, couldn't be happier with these guys. The talent was out today. And really, we rallied at the end of that game to actually make this thing happen. Because it was not a given game. We we were the better team, but our sloppiness and lack of efficiency almost lost us the game. All right, let's take a look at the stats for the game. So, uh, the Washington State Cougars, total yards, 318. 248 of those passing yards, 70 of those rushing yards, averaging about 4.2 yards per play. Uh, so you can tell they ran a lot of plays to average that per play on uh, 318 total yards. We're looking at that 70 rushing yards. I think it's obvious by looking at those numbers, but even more obvious that our defense, when, you, when you're watching the game, that our defense really stopped the run on them and really did not give up much. Their, one of their stars, Max Borgie, that we talked about before the game, was really shut down, really was not able to do too much. I know he got injured, but the truth is we still, even when he was in, it wasn't like the guy was tearing us up. Um, and then for uh, Utah, the yards are going to be 350 total yards, 137 of those passing, and 213 of those yards rushing. So obviously a big disparity there between the rush and the pass. I mean, I, there's a lot of things we could chalk it up to. Um, lack of preparation in the game plan for rising by the coaches and by rising. He's not out of the blame here. But I think another big reason our passing yards look so low is I think it's going to take a couple weeks for it to really click to where we can really develop a game plan that's made for rising skill set. But I do want to be clear, Rising does one thing a little too much, and it's one of the reasons the passing yards are so low. It's the reason the turnovers are low, but the passing yards are so low because what he does is sometimes when you throw a football, you're throwing it to lead the receiver to a spot where only they can make it and hopefully get a pass interference call. I think we all know what I'm talking about there, right? Where it's like two to three yards in front of, like, it's going to be a really tough catch, but they might make the play, and then the corners might pull a pass interference just to stop them from making the play because they're not in the ballpark of making a play on that ball. And what we're seeing is Rising is trying to make these plays happen, but instead of putting it two to three yards in front of the receiver, we see a lot of, four to five yards in front of the receiver if you guys get what i'm saying so this creates a situation where yeah maybe once in a while we'll get a pass interference out of it but overall it's not a great thing because we're going to rarely get pass interference out of it and the receivers never really ha have a chance to make a play on the ball so that's one thing i'm going to be keeping a big eye on when we play against usc next week is uh can rising tighten that up yeah put it in a spot where only re your receiver can make a play but don't put it in a spot where your only hope is a pass interference. But overall, uh, a few notes from the game. Uh, I think our offense, the yards, honestly, as much as I would love to tell you guys we're just running the balls down people's throats, we're doing a decent job at running the ball throughout the game. A lot of those yards are from like the last five minutes of the game, though. We had that huge run by Pledger, and then that other run for 20 yards, which, which counts for about 100 yards of the game. So... Uh, or, or the rushing yards of the game. Uh, overall, though, so our offense, um, really lackluster today. We were able to move the ball a lot better from what I saw with Rising than we were with Charlie Brewer. 
The issue is though, we'd move the ball, we'd drive the ball all the way into the red zone, we'd get to like the 10, 20, or the five, and then we would just sputter out. I mean, we would be calling plays that are low success, so low success plays, and then we'd do a couple plays, and then we'd have to kick a field goal. So we'd be kicking field goals and um, missing them with Redding. Uh, he missed one field goal. He made another one, but missing field goals, we'd be just, you know, looking sloppy overall. It felt like our offense really understood that they needed to step it into the next gear today. And they really did. From what I was watching, I felt like there was a lot of times where offense drove the ball effectively. But once we got to about the red zone, it really felt like we took the pedal off, or we took our foot off the pedal, and just kind of were okay with the fact that we moved the ball a little bit. It's unacceptable. I, I really got to put a lot of this on the pl uh, the play calling. Uh, so many odd play calls, and maybe it's how the players are executing the play calls. But just in the red zone, low success plays like that um, that Keithy um, throw that was almost a touchdown where rising through it to Keithy in the back of the end zone and he jumps up, but it's just a little too high for him. And I mean, this is like a precision pass. It needs to be perfect. And it's like, no, let's try to grind it out, man. We're running the ball so well. Why don't we keep working with that? And just overall, I think one big thing I noticed from the offense is we need to finish drives that type of game we played today as much as we won as much as the score looks good the score does not tell a story in this one we were so close to losing that game i'm happy we won i'm ecstatic we won because even though we were one and two it felt more like we were zero and two when you consider our only win was against the fcs team so it's awesome to see we can go out there against another fbs opponent and actually finish the game but it, it really feels like our inability to finish drives is going to cost us if we don't figure it out the fumbling like just the sloppiness um overall is just unacceptable a team like usc i don't care who's playing quarterback i don't care what injuries they have they will not let us win if we're playing football like that we need to cut down the turnovers i'll touch on that in a second but we just need to make sure we finish our drives no matter what's holding us back we need to finish the drive get the ball in the end zone this game really should have been about 38 to 13 and then i'd be feeling so good about us going into usc we keep it tight with a star-studded defense, and uh, we let our offense, you know, just do what they can do to, fi to, to get as many points on the board as possible. But that's not what I'm seeing right now. What I'm seeing right now is I'm seeing a team that cannot finish drives. Huge reason for that is these turnovers. A lot of turnovers today. We had a lot of turnovers and then a lot of plays that were technically fumbles, but they were like after the whistle was blown. One thing is, can we just not give Tavion Thomas the ball anymore? I mean, it's almost a joke. I, I couldn't believe it when he got in today. He got that carry. And, yeah, technically his knee was down. But it's still, like, in my eyes, that's still a fumble. Like, yeah, your knee's down and the play's over. But you're still fumbling the ball. Your knee was just down and you got lucky. And it, it's like, how, it, please do not give him uh, another rep in, in a run play in a game until he has proven in practice that he could take hundreds of run plays in a row without fumbling it it was a joke today with him even getting the ball bernard one of the guys that i have been so outspoken about as a up-and-coming star on this team fumbled today and uh, i love that whittingham just won't have it he pulls you I, I think that's awesome i think that puts people on notice and it lets you know that that's unacceptable here like whittingham I, I wish we could be doing some more of that at practice to make sure it didn't have it in the game but overall, I think that's awesome to see that they, he understands how important not turning the ball over is. Um, and then with the running backs, TJ Pledger, number five, the running back, monster game, right? The guy, what did he have, like 10 carries? Let, let's take a look at what his carries were. So TJ Pledger, okay. 10 carries, 117 yards and one touchdown. Um, no receiving work for Pledger. Either way, though, what a monster of a game the guy he, it was a lot of that is off a couple big runs but really i understand why they've been giving this guy so many carries he hasn't really done anything with it yet because I've, I've noticed he looks fast but he, he keeps getting swarmed before he can break away 
it makes a little more sense now when you see it working the way it did today. And he he had a mojo to him. He he really had a mojo to him. So I, I remember that one play. Uh, I think it was the twenty seven the twenty plus yard run for the touchdown that kind of put us back in the driver's seat at the end of the game where the there's a free rusher on the D-line that just swipes right past his face. He just doesn't even really do a cutback, just a small jitter. Just The guy slides right bat, past him, boom, just breaks it. I mean, he is explosive. I, I like that we're getting him carries. I'd love to see maybe try to work him in some screens, right? Try to get him in the open field with carries, not just right up the gut. Um, another thing... Now that I mentioned that the D line, uh, the guy, we had a free rusher running right by him. I, I didn't watch every single play of the O line. I wasn't as focused on them. I was really focused on seeing how Rising did today. Um, but the O line overall, from what I was watching, did not impress me a ton. It didn't seem like they were as terrible as usual, but still a lot to be desired. There's no reason to have free rushers flying in at running backs in the backfield, guys. I really want to see how they grade it out with PFF this next week. Uh, so I'll have to get back to you guys on that one. But um, still, things didn't look great. I saw Cam Rising take a lot of unnecessary hits. Um, I can think of two towards the end of the game where he just got drilled into the ground. Let's uh, let's try to do a little better for him, guys. Let's try to Let's try to step it up. And now let's talk about the breakdown of Cam Rising stats. 130 plus passing yards, uh, 32 rushing yards. So about 170-ish yards total. With that, obviously that's not what we want, right? We want Rising to be a bigger playmaker than that. But let me tell you, there were some pros. I think one thing we saw is even against a very stout defense, which that's what that Washington State team was. If you watch the breakdown, this was not a cakewalk of a defense. Their offense wasn't super special, but this defense was not going to be a cakewalk. Um, but with this, we saw Cam Rising break off a bunch of runs. Yeah, I know we say 32 yards, but there were plays where they were in his face in the backfield. The guy makes a cut, bounces it to the outside, hits the edge before the linebacker can, and gets a first down. It was awesome. So that's one thing I'd like to see. I, want, I don't want Rising taking unnecessary hits. But I do want to see us take advantage of his ability with his feet. It is obvious that it is really powerful. So whether that's, you know, uh, him rolling out, like play action rollouts, and get him in space where he can decide if he wants to run or if he wants to throw, or if that means the read option, or if that means, you know, just um, RPOs, Wh whatever works, find ways to let this guy use his feet as a weapon because it is one of the biggest weapons on our team right now is his ability to run the ball. I think that kind of covers the offense for now. Uh, just to recap what, what I kind of ranted on, the, the highlights are going to be we need to finish drives. You know, We can't be turning the ball over at the end of drives or settling for field goals because of bad play calling. We also need to, make, we need to cut the turnovers out. That, it's unacceptable. No matter what level of football you're playing, it is very rare that you win the game if you lose the turnover battle. So let's make sure we're cutting those down because USC is not going to turn over the ball. I mean, hopefully they do, but they're likely not going to turn over the ball on our defense the way that a Washington State is going to turn over the ball on our defense. I would say that with our offense, the final thing is just it, it feels like this team, the other team did not belong on the field with us today on offense and on defense. It really did. But because of stupid mistakes and not finishing drives, they were still in the game. So we need to figure it out. This offense has been a headache all year. Let's, let's hope we can get this team looking solid, finishing drives, and uh, you know, putting together big drives that finish. The, the one, um, the one you know, silver lining for this game was that with our offense was that we really did move the ball better. Believe it or not, I mean, say what you will, we move the ball a lot better than we usually do. We just couldn't get it done at the end of drives. So that's enough about the offense. Let's talk about our defense. Oh, my gosh. I mean, what what m more could we ask for? We do not win that game if we don't have this defense. I mean, if you were watching that game, I, I can't imagine how you would argue with me. So we held them to 318 yards. 
And, and the most impressive part is that rushing game. How did we hold this team um, to 70 rushing yards? That's crazy. They wanted to run the ball on us. When they were up 13 to 10, they knew that our offense could not figure it out and kept making mistakes. So they wanted to grind it out on us, run that clock down, and just beat us into submission. This defense had other plans for them, though. I mean, this was off the charts. One guy that I had not noticed up until today as a big playmaker was number 32, Reed. What a monster. I mean, yeah, he had a pick, which was awesome. It was more just a bad read by the quarterback and threw him a pick, but great on him for making the play. I was more impressed with this guy's ability to get in the backfield. He got tackles for loss. He had tackles at the line. He was tackling well in open space. He was making plays in the ball. I mean, really impressive guy. I couldn't be happier with him. I mean, this is a guy that I'm going to have my eye on next week at USC to see if he's, you know, continuing how he looked today. The other guys I want to mention, now these are honorable mentions. Obviously, they're still the stars. You know, the Devin Lloyds. Sewell, Sewell was out today, but we had the Devin Lloyds. We had the um, uh, Vontae Davis. We have our stars, right? But the guys that I saw some flashes from, uh, first off, number seven, Fillinger. He looked like a beast. This guy was big, explosive, athletic, able to track down backs, able to track down quarterbacks, make plays when we needed plays. I really like this kid. So I'm not saying he's a star yet, but he, he had all the makings of a star. I remember you, if you saw that sack where he literally just drives through the running back's block and knocks the quarterback's legs out from under him, you'd be excited too. The other guy I want to give honorable mention to as an up-and-coming star would be Phillips. I mean, number eight. The guy, I mean, the big play that I'm talking about, I think we all know, it was the one that killed the game for them. Uh, he he picked off that pass and ran it back for a pick six. I mean, he's a freshman, right? As much as, uh, you know, I can't, he hasn't graded out incredibly well. What we saw there, I mean, that's a star play. When you pick the ball off and then you run it back 50 yards for a touchdown, I mean, that's that's how stars are made. That's that's how Deion Sanders made a living. I'm not saying the kid's Deion Sanders, but I think let's just, you know, honorable mention, just someone to keep an eye on. I love that he was able to make a play in the clutch like that. All right, so now our defense. Overall, the team defense looked really solid. Pass rush looked good. Defenders were swarming to the ball. Uh, I really liked what I saw. Um, I would, with the pass rush looking good, the reason I didn't say the pass rush lo looked great was because it felt like certain plays we ha we were really rushing the passer well. And then I don't know if they're taking plays off or what it is, but there are other plays where you're watching and you're just thinking, why is nobody back there? There's some times where a four-man rush is good enough for this defense, and there's other times where it feels like we're not if unless we rush five or six, we just can't get it done. But overall, it's it was a great performance by this defense today. The, this team does is not two and two right now if we don't have to have this defense. And the losses that we have are nowhere near as close without this defense. So our offense needs to start doing them some favors, needs to start showing them that they can put some points on the board so it's not breaking their back every game. Another thing is Mika Tafua, you know, he's a solid player. He's been a solid player for us, but he needs to start containing. Every time we play a high-end quarterback that can run, and not, not a high-end quarterback, but a high-end running quarterback, he loses contain. And then think about this. Yeah, that we can say maybe that's a five-yard run, but that's not always what happens. A lot of time it's on third and 10, so it's a conversion when, when it was third and long. And then what also happens is when these quarterbacks roll out because there's no contain, they they buy so much time that, that a receiver is able to get open downfield and make a big play. Uh, this is something I've noticed every game. I'm sure other coaches are noticing this. He really needs to start containing quarterbacks. It's one of the biggest weak points of his game. The guy is one of the big playmakers on our defense, but that needs to be a focus for him. He does a spin move inside, and then he winds up in the interior of the defense, and the quarterback just has a huge running lane. All right, the team, we're hitting hard. We're tackling well. We're making stands when we need to make stands. The, G the defense is really legit. 
Th this is what's keeping us going in these games. Uh, eight sacks today by this defense. That's <laughs> crazy. Eight sacks. That's got, I don't know what the record is, but it's got to be close to Utah's record for sacks in a game. That was insane. We just we sacked them so much. Honestly, I couldn't be happier with how this defense is playing. It makes it a lot easier to watch the games when you have a defense that just gives you hope no matter what's going on. I remember I wrote down fourth and eight for Washington State. Can we get a stop? We got more than a stop. That's when Phillips got that pick six. Just overall, it really felt like our team started to develop an identity, develop a swagger about them, right? Like a real um, identity to this defense. I'm super excited to see where we go from here. I think if our offense can start to click, start to finish drives, we're going to see huge momentum shifts. We're going to see our team get a lot better and make big strides. Um, so next week, we got USC. And then we're going to be on to Arizona State. This is one of the toughest stretches of our schedule. We really need to be locked in here. Honestly, I, I'm going to be straight with you guys. I think both of these teams are beatable. Okay? I think both USC and Arizona State are beatable. Uh, don't forget, Arizona State lost, wor lost worse to um, BYU than we did. And that was when our quarterback play looked horrible. Not not mediocre, but horrible. And that's a beatable team. Also USC, I, I think they have a lot of weak spots. I'm going to break them down next week. I think they're beatable. Do I think the team that we have been rolling out with every week so far can beat them? No. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that our the way our offense played today, that will not beat USC. That will not beat Arizona State. If we can start, if we can have this ability to move the ball, the talent that we have, the ability to finish drives, we are in both of these games. I would honestly, straight up, I'd put us as a favorite over Arizona State if we could finish these drives. And then with USC, I think we're right in it. I think we can go punch for punch with them. And I think this defense, if the offense gives them the ability to make plays and not put the whole game on their shoulders, this defense is going to make the plays to make it happen. But hey, either way, guys, super great to win today. I couldn't be happier with this team, and I can't wait to see how we are moving forward. This defense is incredible. This offense looked a lot better, and uh, I can see it really improving in the coming weeks. Uh, let's just hope everything's firing on all cylinders next week when we play USC. Uh, again, guys, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I love making these videos for you. I want to hear the feedback. I want to hear what you guys want from me. Um, and just make sure you guys stay tuned next week for the uh, USC video. It's gonna be it's gonna be a good time, and there's gonna be a lot of hype going into that game. All right, guys, have a good one. Go Utes.